TTN HD Production Live here with producer and stone carver Bob Perillo. What inspired you to get into the business, Bob? Long story or short story? Um, short story. Short story, good. <laughs> I was trial lawyer 36 years. I got into uh, acting because I was going to be leaving the practice. I'd done it and I'd had a lot of fun doing it, but I wanted a second chapter. And so I did some acting. And of course, I, I, because, you know, there aren't that many older guys that fulfill roles. I got a lot of roles. Um, but uh, I realized quickly that the thing for me to be doing is being on the other side of the camera. What did I do for 36 years? I tried cases. I made deals. I should be making deals as a producer. So that's why I got into production. Do you find your legal background really has helped you a lot in production? Uh, certainly. Um, I, I went at it methodically. I didn't just one day decide, well, I'm going to be a producer. Uh, as anything else I might do uh, in the law, I s studied entertainment law in the forms of contracts and realized uh, what the pinch points were in negotiation of any given contract and so forth. Um, and uh, in meeting people, uh, try to carefully vet who to work with and not work with and so forth and uh, learned along the way and it's been really a lot of fun. What's the most important part about being a producer? Uh, well, it's nice to be honest mm -hmm. and have integrity. Uh, if you can do that, uh, you're along the way. The next thing is something that I learned in law school. I don't think many law students ever learned this or lawyers learned it, but it's imagination and you can uh, put together a case so it's a winning case uh, with use of imagination as opposed to just the facts. And so when you have that quality uh, characteristic as a producer, you can blend uh, the uh, business side with the creative side. Who is Holly Claus? Holly Claus <laughs> is uh, the princess of uh, Christmas. And Holly Claus is one of the uh, projects that I have going. And Holly is, um, it came about uh, through a uh, fairly long story, but the, the gist of it is that, and in fact, this comes from a book, this is the accompanying picture book, but this novel um, became a bestseller within three weeks or so, a uh, New York Times bestseller, and makes sense to make it into a movie, particularly since the author, uh, Brittany Ryan, has now worked on the second and third books. They're getting ready for publication. And the outlines and drafts for books uh, two through 10 are in the works. So from a production point of view, it makes sense to get into that. Um, and of course, Holly Claus, like any other kind of um, mystical, magical um, uh, princess, Snow White and that sort of thing uh, enchants the world with all of the little uh, fairies and, and goblins and so forth. So that's a little bit of Holly Claus. And naturally, um, if it's a Snow White kind of uh, movie, um, there has to be the evil spirit, mm -hmm. naturally, right? Yeah. And so the evil spirit's Farrakhand and, uh, you know, the only way she can break the curse of Farrakhand, who's a terrible person, is to love him. And uh, so it's a sweet story. And uh, children uh, went crazy reading it. And so hopefully that's the blueprint for a, uh, a good film. Are these types of stories things that you are hoping to produce in the future as well? Oh, yes. You know, hopefully uh, we make the first one, it will be uh, a good story, a, a good film, and there's the prospect for a franchise, which is nice as a producer. The other thing is, um, you know, and this shows sort of the business-like side of me, we'll, we'll have at the same time uh, sort of a three-legged stool of uh, production of more, publication of more books mm -hmm. and uh, toys and uh, video games and uh, I interactive internet games and so forth. And we've lined up uh, agents and companies to do that. So the movie will uh, in, all, in part be an advertisement for the rest of the enterprise, the Holly Claus enterprise. 
And how did you get involved in stone carving? <laughs> stone carving. Uh, that would uh, be a story that would bore you into, <laughs> I into a coma, Katie, you know? <laughs> but um, uh, again, the short version is that, uh, you know, I'm Italian. In fact, this is how I show my, uh, my identity when I get to the airport and so forth, my Italian passport. And so um, my ancestors were all stone carvers and it comes naturally. I've always had an affinity for stone and uh, I took up carving. It's a uh, uh, challenging sort of uh, uh, undertaking, artisans, and if you look at that, for example, you'll see the little chatter marks where each little stroke of a um, mallet against the chisel uh, eventually carves into a stone uh, letters, incising letters, and um, that, uh, for example, the R is 90 degrees. If you did a T or an L or whatever, um, for me, they have to be 90 degrees. Okay not 89 and a half degrees yeah. they have to be perfectly perpendicular um, that stone doesn't have it but lots of words of course have repeat letters mm -hmm. so if I did an A I'd want to have an identical kind of A yeah. you know so it's, it's a real challenge um, uh, you might see me in New England where I'm from uh, going around graveyards looking at uh, Revolutionary War era uh, slate headstones which is, you know, sort of what I do. Research. Research, exactly right, exactly right. Wonderful, and where can we find out more information on you online and about your upcoming projects? Uh, I wish I could say I have a website and that sort of thing, but I haven't uh, done that yet. So where you can find out is watching your interview. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Here it is, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for the interview and for this beautiful stone carving that says grace on it that you graciously made for me. I really appreciate well, it. You are quite welcome. Thank you. And best of luck with your upcoming projects. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate uh, that because in addition to everything else, luck is a big component. <laughs> I'm Katie Ullman reporting for TTNHD Production Live. Oh, oh, oh.